How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're going to be doing an update video on my 2019 Ford F-150's oil consumption issue. We ended up getting it figured out, and the truck is no longer consuming oil, so we're going to be discussing that in today's video. With that being said, let's get right into it. So today, we're going to be discussing the recent TSB that I've had done to this truck here. And a TSB is known as a technical service bulletin. It's basically work that your dealership is going to do. Now, it's not going to be part of a recall process, but it will be covered under the warranty. Now, a lot of guys were complaining that their 5-liter engines on their 2018, 2019, and some 2020 models were burning oil. Now, even though the engine was technically burning oil, the burning of the oil was a byproduct or more of an end result of two separate issues that were actually causing what's technically referred to as oil consumption. So the engine was consuming oil and the end result was the oil was getting burnt off in the combustion chambers. So I'm going to be taking you guys through two of those issues and how Ford ended up fixing those. So the TSB that I had done on this truck is known as the 19-2365 TSB. And this is known in the Ford world as the oil consumption fix on these 5 liter V8 engines. Now in that 19-2365 oil consumption TSB, there's basically going to be two major things that they fix. One is going to be installing a longer dipstick, believe it or not, and we're going to get to that. The next thing is going to be reprogramming the PCM, which is the powertrain control module to make it so that the throttle plate inside of the throttle body here doesn't close as much on deceleration. And we're gonna get to that next, but the first thing we're gonna do is focus on the dipstick here. So a lot of guys couldn't understand why Ford would go and install a longer dipstick. Basically, a lot of people thought that Ford wanted to put more oil into the engine, but there was a big issue with this oil consumption and it all came down to some dipsticks that came out of the factory. So you have to imagine that a dipstick goes down into the bottom end of the engine and that's going to determine the height of your engine's oil capacity. Now these five liters or mine specifically which is a 2019 is supposed to take 8.8 .8 quarts of 5w20 synthetic or semi-synthetic oil. Now you could round that up to nine quarts, not gonna be that big of a deal. So let's just say it's around nine quarts of oil. What was happening is that when a service tech at any oil change place, they're gonna go by whatever the manufacturer recommends to get the oil close to where the dipstick should be. Then they're gonna pull the dipstick out, wipe it off, put it back in, pull it out again and check it. And if they're low, they're going to add a little bit of oil until the oil starts to get up on those hash marks is what they're called. And depending on the length of your dipstick, that capacity could change. So with the people that were having the oil consumption issues, what the Ford engineers noticed was that some of the dipsticks on some of these trucks were actually shorter than other ones when they did a comparison. Now you have to understand that a shorter dipstick is going to be higher in the crankcase, right? So you're going to have to fill that bottom end up with more oil and that is going to cause the first part of the oil consumption issue. Basically, the techs over at these Ford dealerships and pretty much anywhere else were unknowingly overfilling these engines with oil. So instead of the 8.8 .8 or 9 quarts of oil, I heard that some of these 5 liter engines were getting 10 or even 11 quarts of oil. Now that improper dipstick length was just one of the issues. The second issue, we're going to be discussing the throttle body right here. Now inside of this throttle body is going to be your throttle plate, just like the butterfly valve on a small engine's carburetor. When it opens, it allows more air into the engine. Now, a lot of you that have driven manual cars before are going to be familiar with engine braking. When you downshift the engine, instead of getting on the brakes, you're using the engine to slow down the vehicle, which is referred to as engine braking. So one of the issues that the Ford engineers actually found was that the throttle plate was closing too much on deceleration on these engines, which was creating a vacuum in the top end of the engine. So you can see where I'm going with this. We have an engine that now is overfilled with oil and also creating more vacuum than it should in the top end. And on these engines, 
we have what's known as a PCV system. This is a positive crankcase ventilation. The job of this PCV system is to vent that positive crankcase pressure back into the intake manifold. Now, this engine, it's a V8, has eight cylinders, but is essentially the same as any internal combustion engine. Just like a lawnmower, it needs to vent that pressure. Now, it does so via a PCV valve, which is that brown piece of plastic right there. And that valve right there is a one-way check valve, essentially. So it's got a little piece of plastic and a spring in it that only allows positive crankcase pressure to vent out, but not go back in. Now, in the case of this engine, I have installed the JLT 3.0 oil separator, also known as an oil catch can. We're going to get into that. But if your engine doesn't have this, and this is an aftermarket part, so it doesn't come from the factory, you would normally have a tube, which is what we have here, going from the PCV valve and routing back to this port right here, which goes into your intake manifold. So engines overfilled with oil, throttle plate closes too much on deceleration, creating top end vacuum, which then sucks that oil through the PCV system back into the intake manifold. Now at this point, the engine hasn't burnt that oil yet, but that oil is going to then go through all of your intake valves into your cylinders, and it's going to get burned off during the combustion process. So one of the main benefits of having a catch can or an oil separator is that you're essentially creating an area where some of that oil vapor can be trapped by routing it in between your PCV system. So we're catching a little bit of oil and I'm gonna show you how much oil this thing catches. It's not that much, but in the installation video, which I can link in the top right of your screen if you'd like to see that, a lot of guys were saying that there is no need for a catch can on a naturally aspirated engine. So that's just an engine that doesn't have any forced induction like a supercharger or a turbocharger. And while a catch can is going to collect much more oil on a turbocharged engine, something that has forced induction, it's because when you're forcing that air into the intake manifold, you're creating more suction here at the intake. You're also increasing the positive pressure inside of your cylinder and some of that pressurized air is going to bypass your piston rings, go into your crankcase, so you're gonna have more crankcase pressure. So you're getting more suction at this tube here, and you're getting more outwards pressure at this port here. So again, an oil catch can on an engine that has forced induction is going to be highly recommended. However, on my engine that's naturally aspirated, I showed you guys in an update video, which I can also link, this oil catch can here, gets about one to two ounces every oil change interval. And I'll get to my oil change intervals in a bit, but I just wanted to go through that PCV system and kind of explain what was happening. So again, a lot of guys were complaining that these engines were burning oil, but that was the byproduct of the whole system and these two issues that were causing that recirculation of that excess amount of oil. So step one of the TSB was they went ahead and installed a longer dipstick, which I'll be showing you in a moment. Basically, it goes farther into the crankcase. So now you're putting the correct capacity of oil inside of the engine. That was step one. Step two was a reprogram of the PCM. That's the powertrain control module. So what they did was they limited how much the throttle plate inside of the throttle body here could close on deceleration. And that drastically reduced the amount of vacuum up here at the top end. So now we have less oil in the engine, but now it's the proper amount and we have less vacuum up here. So it's creating less suction through your PCV system. And the 19-2365 TSB absolutely 100% solved my oil consumption issues that I was having on this 2019 five liter V8. So I got a shop towel here and I've already pulled out and wiped off the dipstick. The truck has also been sitting for a few moments to let the oil settle back down into the engine. But without cutting or editing, I wanted to show you guys the oil level here on my truck. See if I can get a shot of it right there. So you guys are gonna see that that oil is just below, ever so slightly under the full line on that hash mark there. So I'll try to get a better shot here. I flip the dipstick around, but basically the oil level is right to there. So before 
the dipstick was much shorter. What they've done is increased the range in between these two holes there by one quart. So now you have an extra quart of range. Now in my update video that I did, I think my truck was around 5,000 kilometers. When I checked my oil catch can, I only had a couple ounces in it. But when I went ahead and checked my dipstick, I noticed that my truck was about a quart low every thousand kilometers. So going back to the shorter dipstick, if the incorrect dipstick length created, you know, this issue where I was overfilling the engine's capacity by one quart, then what was happening is my engine wasn't actually losing any oil. It was consuming excessive oil. So I was putting in an extra quart of oil every thousand kilometers and the engine was sucking that oil through the PCV system into the intake manifold. And I basically just thought, along with every other Ford F-150 owner that had the five liter V8, we all thought that this was this big issue where, you know, we were losing a quart of oil every thousand kilometers. Now, I explained to you guys that I have the 10-year ultimate warranty on this truck, which covers me for 10 years or a total of uh, 200,000 kilometers. So I really didn't have any long-term concerns about this truck because within the course of 10 years, if anything happens, they're going to go ahead and cover it under warranty. But what I did to initiate the TSB process was I simply took a picture of the dipstick and the service manager over there at my dealership saw that the oil was low on said dipstick. I said that I was filling the truck up with a quart of oil every thousand kilometers. And at 5,000 kilometers, I took this truck in for that TSB. They went ahead and you know did the work and I haven't had any issues since. The truck right now is sitting at about 8,600 kilometers. I really haven't driven it too much this past year because of this whole lockdown. I also work from home, so I'm not driving a long distance to work every day. But you guys are just going to see that on this truck, the TSB did solve the issue. And coming over to the JLT 3.0 oil separator, I'm just going to pull off the catch can here so that you guys can see how much oil it is collecting just to prove that they do in fact work. You guys are going to see there, it's not too much. That's definitely less than an ounce. You guys can see that it looks a little brown and milky, and that's because of the moisture that's in it. So if I was to let that settle out, all of the water moisture that's in there is going to evaporate, and then you're just going to be left with oil. And I got a couple comments on the install video and also the update video asking if it was normal for the oil to look that color. A lot of guys think that something's wrong with their engine. So I just want to point out that if you don't run your engine for a long period of time to get it really hot and you kind of make a lot of short trips, so you start your truck up, you drive to the store and then you drive right back home, your engine's going to have a little bit of this excess moisture that it can't burn off. Whereas if you were driving a long distance to work and you're really heating up your engine, your engine's going to burn off that moisture naturally and it's not going to end up in your PCV system. So this is completely normal for someone like me that regularly makes short trips. Now, the oil does look a little dark on the dipstick and that's because my oil life is currently at about 35%. You can see it on the infographic there on your screen. So this engine and this truck tracks the oil's life by Ford's intelligent oil life monitoring system. And this system tracks not just the mileage on the engine, but also a variety of things, including temperature, you know, barometric pressure, the load you put on the engine, what mode you drive your engine in, because a lot of guys are kind of confused about that. They think that everyone should get their oil changed at the same time when that's not true. You could have an elderly couple that has an F-150 with a five liter V8 in it, and maybe they only make one or two trips a week down to get groceries. Maybe they go to church. So they're just driving it like a normal passenger vehicle. Whereas you could have someone like me that commonly drives my truck in sport mode, revs the truck out in sport mode. It's always gonna drive in a couple gears lower. So you're gonna be having the engine running at a higher RPM. I also tow with this truck. So I'm putting a heavier load on this truck. So in the same 10,000 kilometer range on both trucks, you would have significantly different oil life expectancy. And you guys can see there, 
So from 5,000 kilometers to about 8,600 kilometers, that is what my oil looks like. Now, apart from getting the 19-2365 TSB done, I did want to point out that there was one other thing that you could do to see if you could fix this issue without having the TSB itself done. And I did mention it in my JLT 3.0 update video, and that was to upgrade your PCV valve right there. So I'll put an infographic up on screen. Basically, the stock OEM PCV valve has a straight through hole design to it. So it doesn't really restrict a lot of that positive crankcase pressure that's going through it. Now, one of the things that the Ford engineers noticed when they were trying to fix this oil consumption issue was that they could take a PCV valve out of a 2015 and up Mustang GT, which also had the 5 liter V8 on it, and they could install that onto these trucks. And if you'll notice on the infographic, the PCV valve on the right has a cross section put into it. Now, this restricts a little bit of that positive crankcase pressure going through the PCV system. And I've heard that for a $5 or $7 here in Canada fix, you can install that PCV valve on the passenger side of the truck. And some guys have said that it solved the issue. Now, that's one of the things that I tried first, and unfortunately, it didn't solve my issue, which is why I wanted to do this video to cover, you know, talking about the TSB, because a couple of guys were asking, you know, is it worth it to try out that uh, PCV valve change? And I said it is for, you know, it cost me, I think, $7. It was a $5 part, a couple dollars for shipping, you know, and tax. And I put it in, I ran the truck for a little while, and I didn't notice a difference. So I had to get the TSB done. The one of the reasons though that you want to try that PCV valve change first before you get the TSB done is because since the TSB was performed on my engine, I do notice that I'm getting less fuel economy on this engine. So it is burning more fuel. It's uh, worse on gas. And that is because the throttle body is not closing as much. So you could imagine that the RPMs aren't going to drop as quickly, which means the engine's going to, you know, take a little bit longer to bring those RPMs down, which means your engine's going to be burning more fuel. So that is a, one of the trade-offs of the TSB. However, as you guys saw, the engine is not consuming any oil. So the oil consumption has been fixed 100%. And like I said, I'm still pulling out an ounce or two every oil change interval, which on this truck, I'm currently getting the oil changed at intervals of 5,000 kilometers, which believe it or not is around 3,300 miles, which is kind of frequent. But again, for how I drive my truck, you know, the way that I drive it a little bit harder than most people would, you know, revving it out, hitting the rev limiter sometimes, towing it putting a load under the engine. I figure for how cheap oil is, go ahead and get it changed, you know, more frequently. And this engine shouldn't have any issues. And then pair that with the JLT 3.0 oil separator. And I'm now preventing about one or two ounces of oil from being burned off in the combustion chamber every 5,000 kilometers. So for somebody like me, that's gonna have this truck for 10 years, you know, spending $180 on an oil catch can was definitely something that I wanted to do. And just as a little bonus, I am doing valve work on this Tecumseh HMS K80 engine that is on this John Deere TRS26 snowblower. So you'll want to stay tuned to the channel because that video will be up next week. And if you guys remember that uh, oil catch can update, I did have this glass jar here and we've been dumping all of the stuff that my catch can has been catching into this jar. And you guys can see here that, you know, it's not that much, but again, you know, over the course of 10 years, that's definitely gonna add up. So, I mean, you could assume that, you know, let's say 10,000, you know, you double that 20, 30, 40 fit, like next thing you know, this jar is gonna be filled. And I just wanted to show you guys that an oil separator on a naturally aspirated engine isn't that far-fetched. And like I said, for $180, it gives me peace of mind that all of this oil vapor isn't going into my cylinders and getting burned off and coating valves and everything, which, you know, I was discussing valves in the video that I'm going to be showing you guys next week. So again, stay tuned for that. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Like you guys saw, we have the oil consumption issue on this 2019 5 liter V8 completely sorted out. 
there's no oil consumption, there's no oil burning, so my engine's not gonna be all carboned up because of that excess oil consumption. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up, you know it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.